Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> this, is the, <laughs> this is the light gate. This is our second. <laughs> yep. Uh, here on the United States. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Network. I think I'm getting a double. There we go. Okay. All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us on the light gate. My name is Preston Dennett. I'm an author and UFO researcher, and joining me is Dolly Safran, UFO experiencer, extraordinaire, and psychic, and all around wonderful person. <laughs> and this is our episode number two on the United Paranormal Network. We're streaming on 107.7 .7 on Roku, on Facebook, on YouTube, and all over the place. And on the radio network there at 105.3. Very cool. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> thanks, Dolly. Oh. So yeah, thanks so much for joining us. I'm super excited. We have a really wonderful guest, one of my favorite people on this planet for sure. And, oh, Susan says happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and, but, yeah, well, let me just say a quick hello to some of the people who are here in chat with us. So I really want to thank you for joining us. I see Nancy Thames. Hi, Nancy. I see you all over Facebook. I love you. Michael Kennedy. Love you too. Love all you guys. Hi, Carol. Um, let's see. Foggy Notions Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Musa Levi. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right, but I hope so. Silent Listen. Fun Talks TV. All kinds of people. Chewy. Um, let's see. Who else? Susan Alloway. Yay. Brian Morgan, the Mookie, Louise, Woodland Goblin. We have all kinds of wonderful people joining us tonight. Thanks so much. I'm super excited to uh, interview our guest tonight. Donald Hughes, Sarah Mill, John Lanigan. Thank you all so much. Don't want to waste too much time because our guest tonight is so amazing. She is my dear, sweet sister-in-law. Christine Kisara Dennett. She's married to my older brother, Mark. I first met Christine, Christy as I call her, uh, when I was a teenager actually. <laughs> uh, so I've known her for most of my life. She goes by the artist name Kisara. Uh, she's a very accomplished artist as we will find out. And when I got involved in UFOs in 1986, uh, she was there for me. She had had some experiences, which we'll be talking about tonight. And she and Mark, who also had seen a UFO, her husband, they were the ones who I really turned to to wrap my head around the fact that UFOs were real. And it, when I started to become a UFO researcher, I turned to Christy to help illustrate some of the uh, experiences that I was investigating the ETs that I was uh, interviewing people about. And she went along for the ride happily. She's a very accomplished artist. She's a UFO experiencer. She illustrates not only my books, but for books of many other authors, uh, like Barbara Lamb, uh, Kim Carlsberg, Michael Sala. She works with all kinds of mediums artistically and is really on the forefront, one of the best known UFO artists on this planet. So we're going to be talking about that and some of her experiences, some of the psychic stuff she went through and all kinds of fun stuff. So yeah, let's just bring, bring Christy on and we will get this show started. Yeah, there you are. Hi, Christy. Hello. Hi, <laughs> Thanks so much for coming on the show tonight. <laughs> oh, of course. Anything for you. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, well, I'm so excited to talk to you today because I know you don't do a lot of shows. Uh, and it's a real honest-to-God treat because uh, you've had such a huge impact on my life, on my work. I think I owe a lot of my success, honestly, <laughs> to your amazing art. So, yeah, just a huge hug and a huge thank you for coming on. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. I have zillions of artwork. It's a lot. <laughs> it's nice to yeah. really appreciate it. 
a lot of work. Yeah. I know. In fact, I don't know if you can see it behind me, but here is one of your amazing paintings, which is here in my home. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, I am not sure where to start because you've had so many experiences, but I figured it would be fun just to talk about how you first started as an artist way back in grade school drawing dragons and got in trouble for that. <laughs> well, I um, was going to school in Utah and uh, it was uh, kindergarten and um, everybody was finger painting and I you know, little kids, they do circles and all sorts of stuff with their fingers. And I was drawing dragons in the ocean and it kind of freaked out everybody. They didn't understand that I could even make an image instead of circles. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I don't know. My grandma used to get worried too about it because I love dragons when I was little. I still do. I still love them. <laughs> I have them in common. I love them, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Ever since I watched Game of Thrones, I'm obsessed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I had an out-of-body experience I, I, once where I saw a dragon. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, it was the most amazing thing. Sorry. My so, mom yeah. she used to draw for me. Um, she used to draw horses and stuff, and I, that was just in love with her drawing for me. And I think that's what got me going with the drawing. And I've been drawing ever since, every day. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> so, did you know from a, you know, that age that you were going to be an artist by vocation, career? Um. You know, I didn't really think much about it because my father was an engineer, so I wasn't really hurting for money. It was until um, my mom and dad got separated and I started working on my own. I was 16 uh, that I realized that, um, you know, I had to make money somehow. So I got these little jobs, but what always stayed consistent was doing artwork for other people. Yeah. Yeah, I remember, I remember, oh, Nancy, Nancy. thank you. She loves <laughs> Kisara's artwork. Yes. <laughs> yeah, she says, I love Thank Kisara's you. artwork. Me too. I remember when we, we were quite young, you got to work at a t-shirt um, screen, screen, what do you call it? Screen painting or something. And you also well, did we little emblem. Yeah, we were hand yeah, <laughs> we were hand painting shirts. Right, I remember That's that. What I was doing. And you worked as Production an art teacher art. too. Yeah, I remember you working yeah, in an art. Vietnamese for the Vietnamese, I worked as an art teacher for all the kids. Yeah. And I also remember when we went to the Topanga Days Country Fair and got a booth. You did, and did face painting. And that was very popular. I did that for 12 <laughs> years. 12 years. I got to paint at the um, Sheik's Mansion in... Uh... Oh, my. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty bizarre, I'll tell you. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, face painting is very bizarre when uh, you get... <laughs> yeah, the last, the last day I remember is... Uh, it was in the seventies and the wives and the husbands were trading bolts and, uh, and, uh, those things that go into the bolts. What are they called? Yeah. That was the last time my sister and I decided to face paint for a party. So. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> from the kids to the adults. That's really cool. <laughs> um, Nancy yeah. Thames wants to know what inspired your beautiful artwork? How were you inspired? Um, spirit. You know, God, spirit. 
That single thing just moves through me. I have to express myself. It kind of shifted. It shifted a lot when my son passed away last year. Uh, the access to information flowing through my body changed and I'm having to relearn all over again. It's very interesting. Wow. Yeah. It, it reminds wow. me when I turned 16 and reached puberty, mm -hmm. um, a lot of stuff changed spiritually and, you know, that access that we have right. to um, the spirit or whatever you want to call it. Um, everybody's connected in some way or another right. and there's no filters uh you either are connected on all different frequencies and levels and so when my son passed away it shifted me so drastically that now it's hard for me to access other people oh, wow. yeah and um i don't know why I'm just having to learn all over again. It's like I, I switched channels and I'm not the same person anymore. And it's Isn't funny. that a part of growth, don't you think? Aren't we challenged in that way? Oh, when definitely. we have something happen to us? Yeah. yeah. Well, not, that happened yeah. to me when I was, you know, a materialist, really logical, scientifically minded, and suddenly everything changed when my mom passed away and I started having out-of-body experiences and psychic stuff. And, because I remember when you came into the house and Marco brought you in, I'm like, oh, wow, well, who's this new person? And you start talking about psychic stuff. And I'm like, eh, yeah, right. Until <laughs> you came in one day and said, I know you guys are talking about me because you, you were part of the job system. We all had our chores to do. <laughs> yeah. and, and I'm like, oh, my God, you, you were right. And that's when I started <laughs> to really look at you with a new light because that was my first example of clear psychic ability. I'm like, hmm, <laughs> maybe there is something to this. You're busted. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it was really funny, actually. I look back on it fondly because I'm like, wow, this lady, there's more to her than I realized. So I knew you were psychic from the very beginning. Uh, yeah. And that's when I really started to pay attention <laughs> to you. <laughs> yeah, we have something in common. You had visitations when you were young. And uh, you've seen a being that I'm very well familiar with, and I want you to tell me about it. Tell us. Tell everybody. Oh, yeah. When you were 10, was it? I think so. It was um, when I just got to California, was living in Woodland Hills. Uh, it came to me, probably, I was probably nine. It came to me every night for two weeks. I was wide awake and it was playing with my feet it was putting like these rods on my feet not in my feet but on my feet maybe they were in i don't know and when i'd wake up i'd i'd look at them and they were little dwarf type beings with very shiny beady eyes and wrinkly faces like a sharpe dog right and um gray uh, thick um, skin and they wore cloaks over themselves and their hands were little stubby hands and they just telepathically told me to go back to sleep that they were taking my memories <laughs> and I did <laughs> I, I went back to sleep and um, this happened for two weeks and then it just went away and my sister and I went out uh, our driveway to the end of the driveway and looked up at the sky and, and it was crying and saying, come back. And I had <laughs> we don't no go memory here. <laughs> being on ship or anything like that. All I remember on in a very vivid way was them coming and visiting me and the glowing rods on my toes and feet. Now, did you ever yeah. see them arrive? Or, or leave? No, no. I just woke up and saw them doing this. So. Huh. And was it scary at all? No, I I was not as scared at all. I, it didn't surprise me either, which makes it kind of interesting. So, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. 
Um, I was I was also missing for a whole day in uh, Utah, Salt Lake City. Um, oh, when really? I, was, I was probably around two and they found me across yeah. a huge highway at a play playground. And I have no memory of that. Oh, wow. oh my God, Dolly, that's exactly like you. Yeah. <laughs> when you were missing for, I went for a ride. <laughs> and I ended up me about too. seven miles from the house. Only they dropped me off behind a U totem and told me to walk around to go in the front. That's amazing to me. Um, you how remember long? All that. Yeah, I do remember. Yeah, it, it took a lot for me to get there. Um, that one I remember vividly because I was very um, agitated and angry with everybody because they promised me a balloon. I have a balloon fetish. And I wanted a big red balloon and I didn't get one and it went in my memory like crazy. And uh, so that's why I remember that one. So now see. going back to these blue beings, did you feel and them? I do get, um, I do have a memory of uh, in kindergarten in Utah, Salt Lake City. Yeah. Uh, going to take a nap and this man comes and gets me. And he's ah. wearing overalls. And hmm. I don't remember much about that. Overalls, that's interesting because that's kind of like the jumpsuit ETs often wear. Right. Makes me wonder. Yeah, he had, the face, he had a face like Santa Claus, but he, he was bald and didn't have any hair on his face. But he had these twinkly blue eyes. I remember his eyes. How tall and was my he? My body feels weird when I remember it. Um, how tall? Jeez, I don't remember his height. All I remember is his pretty much his eyes. Now, now we do have a picture that you drew of the blue beings, which I'm hoping we can display on the screen. Uh, this is okay. something you drew of what you saw. And it's so funny because I showed this to other experiencers. And I remember the first time I did that, like, that's exactly it. And I showed it to Dolly, and Dolly can describe her reaction. <laughs> um, I, my, it, it dropped the floor out from underneath me because you're a good artist. You you captured it. That's exactly what they looked like. You did really well with it. I was, I, there was no doubt in my mind who it was you were portraying. And um, I was amazed, absolutely amazed. I was like, wow. Thank you. No? So. How old were you when you did that? How many years had elapsed before you did that painting? Uh, I did it right after I started working for Preston. Wow. That is, see, your memory's good because for you to pull that out like that is incredible. I mean, you have a memory for art, maybe. Maybe that's it. You know, artists yeah. always know what they're going to draw. There's somehow there's something going on. Like you said, you get a connection and. It all comes up that way. And I got an idea that the memories are all lurking up there. And maybe your next step is to start drawing till you remember things out all the way. Just doing page after page until you come up with it. Maybe that's your challenge, that's right? That's what I've been doing. I've been um, just painting. And I'm not really keeping anything in my brain. I'm just allowing myself to, to just uh, move, act. Yeah. Uh, well, I recently I, I showed that. Go ahead. I recently showed that same painting that we're, we're going to get up here in a sec, I hope. Um, oh, here it is. This is the painting of what you saw. I recently showed this to a guy I was interviewing in Mississippi. He had his experience initially in East Texas. Uh, now he's living in Mississippi. And he, start, he called me because he saw the picture. <laughs> he's like, that's exactly what I saw. <laughs> that's exactly it. Uh, and his account will oh, be wow. appearing in a future yeah. book. But he, yeah, he said they came in around the same age over and over and over and over again, along with grays in the background and way behind a much taller being, which I suspect is a mantid or perhaps a tall white, really tall, like nine uh -huh. feet. But he says these guys were always in the front. They were very friendly. He said that he always got almost a happy feeling from them. He tried to tell his parents and stuff, but they never believed him, even though they would wake up in the morning, he, he had a brother, and they would be wrapped up tightly in their blankets, so tight they were like Tootsie Rolls <laughs> or burritos and couldn't get out. <laughs> yeah. It's so weird. I've had that, a couple of witnesses describe that sort of thing. 
I'm not sure I, why they're doing that. From my experience is that this is a really common thing that they love to work with children. Okay. And I've asked my contacts, you know, is that true? And yes. And then uh, something hit me profoundly. I want to ask you, Christina, what do you think about this? Um, it hit me hard one day. You know, a lot of stories that we get in literature come from contact that people are not remembering, but they're expressing out somehow and writing the stories of things that happen and they're turning it into a yarn. And uh, I kept thinking about the Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Uh, uh -huh. And I thought, oh, my God, what if that's them, you know? Because they all look like that, and they all have different personalities. I remember that vividly. And uh, what do you think? I think it's quite possible of trying to explain their experiences, the children. Yep. Um, also, fairy lore. Right. And leprechauns and all the little right. beings. Yeah. I think if you go back into history and read about all of that, it's... It seems pretty similar to me. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. yep. you know, it's funny because uh, when this the guy interviewed in Mississippi, saw the, he and his brother saw Star Wars with the Ewoks. <laughs> they lost their minds because that's they're like, oh my oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's Whitley Strieber. If you look on his movie Communion, there's a picture of you know a costume, a kid looks exactly the same just like that so that's that's amazing that you're able to capture that so accurately yeah i, I did a lot of drawings um earlier and uh i mean i can scan through them I, i'll show you i don't know if you can see everything oh yeah oh. can you see that yes yeah. oh wow Hmm. This is yours, Preston. Oh, yeah, the healing. Are... They're a little bit overexposed, but I can see them. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. How about that? Is that better? Oh, better, yes. There you go. Oh, wow. yeah. Oh, yeah, there's the clown one, the alien clown connection. <laughs> they sometimes dress up as clowns for little kids, usually. <laughs> Uh, Fun Talks TV wants to know, do these ETs actually wear hoods? Uh, yes, I've seen them wearing hoods. And I, Christina, have you, you've seen them wearing hoods as well, right? Yeah. I, not I've not seen, like covering uh, your whole face. It's like a hoodie up, you know? Right. A yeah. cloak hood. A cloak. They're kind yeah. of big. Yeah. Not all of them, but some do. Yes. This is what I'm associated with. Okay, the one on the on our left of the screen. Yeah, the okay. light things. Yeah. Um, uh, funny you I should say I did an interview. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. I did an interview with a woman who just walked up to me, looked like a housewife, regular woman, mm -hmm. and she accidentally poisoned herself in Hawaii. And ended up in a cave with one of these beings. Wow. Amphibian. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that she was cured. She had, yeah. If I remember they correctly, she her. was, she had, was cleaning her bathtub or her bathroom and used bleach and lime away and a couple of other detergents and it made a noxious gas. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and they healed her. Yeah, one of many cases. There's, oh yeah, this one I love. That's the painting actually behind me right now. Just <laughs> lit, up. lit up. Yeah. That's amazing. Very cool. <laughs> I just thought I'd show you. Well, yeah. I, I have another I have picture. I, I have another picture I, I want to put on of which. Uh, will be put on the screen in a second. Uh, this one. This is the first UFO drawing you ever did. <laughs> yeah. That's when I was investigating the Topanga Canyon UFO wave in 1992. I'm like, Christy, would you mind drawing a UFO picture for me? This is a true case where these four kids were in Old Canyon. This is in Topanga Canyon. 
and saw first a tiny little craft come over the house, followed by two more, followed by this enormous craft with little lights all around the edges. I interviewed all four witnesses. Uh, one witness was giving me a, just a terrible description. He says, honestly, Preston, I'm sorry, I can't describe it. I was too scared. But one of the witnesses, Gabe is his name, said he had seen a UFO before, and he said it was the most awesome thing he's ever seen, and he gave a very good description. This thing came right down very low over the house, shined on a beam of light right on the house, and moved off, followed by, I think, one more craft. So they saw a virtual fleet. This was the beginning of the Topanga Canyon wave. And so I asked you to draw this, and I put it on a flyer, and uh, put, have you seen me? <laughs> Call me and, and, and my number, and I posted it all over the bulletin boards in Topanga on telephone poles. And boy, that picture had legs. I still see it. I mean, I'm he all still has over. people call him about it. They still have it. Some people. Yeah. 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 Well, they kept yeah. taking it down. They kept taking the picture down. I remember you got really upset. He said, I hung all these pictures up, and now they're all gone, and I have to go back and hang them up again. <laughs> Yeah. I was getting calls, though, from people who'd apparently seen it. <laughs> and, yeah, I just talked to a lady, a, a contactee in England who was living in Topanga at the time. She says, you know, I'm really sorry. That was me. <laughs> I took your flyer down. <laughs> and she's like, I really, she's trying to get a, a copy of it right now. But I had another person says, you know, I walked into a house in Topanga, and I saw your flyer on their wall. <laughs> and they had... <laughs> They drew it, you know, they colored it up. and That's drew. delightful. That's wonderful. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? So that first picture you ever did is so, well, you gave you gave me the original. I have it like right, right over there somewhere. Um, but yeah, that'll be worth something someday. <laughs> I think so. So that's how it all started. And, you know, I, I kind of felt a little guilty pulling you into the UFO field. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> Like, I hope I, I hope this is all right. <laughs> because That's okay. You, all right. Because after that, I mean, you started, I'm like, I want another, and then another, and another. And that's when it started. <laughs> you were illustrating my articles for magazines, like UFO Universe, and let's see, Unsolved Sightings, and all kinds of stuff. And, we, and recently, I put out that series of books, Not From Here, one through four. And got all those pictures, put them together. And so finally, we're those pictures are still circulating. <laughs> it's amazing to me. I know it is. And it, I've done so many. I mean, I, I've done so many. Incredible. Did, did you ever count them? It's, it's like 10,000 or something. Oh, it's a lot. I don't even, I don't even know how many I made. Oh, remember this one? Yes. Arnie? Arnie Weiler, yep. He was in his house in Pasadena yeah. when he um, right appeared. Um, so Leo 62279 says, you think these beings are, are as, you think of them as peers, helpers. Does it change based on the race? And... What was the question again? Uh, do you think these being do you think of these beings as peers or helpers? And does it change based on the race or the ethnicity? Um, I would call it ethnicity, yeah. I you know I really don't know. Uh, there's so many different people I've worked for as for my own personal experiences. Um I don't know. I really don't. I, I know they're not bad. Right. I know they haven't done anything evil to me. Um, as for other people, the range is from zero to, you know, a hundred. It's just everything. Well, let me ask you a question. Have you ever had an experience that you remember where afterwards you felt like um, you uh, something got satisfied that you needed to know, or did you suddenly have um, 
uh, feel better somehow or more elevated or more on psychically with your painting and stuff like that. Is it possible that they did kind of encourage you to paint or draw or whatever? Is that's, I, I think that's what you wanted to know. I did have an experience actually. Okay. It was a, a very vivid dream. And um, it was like flashcards or flashing where you mm -hmm. see images really fast that go by really fast. Yes. And um, it was a vivid dream. I don't think it was a dream. I think I was being inputted uh, uh, information mm -hmm. from some source. And they were inputting all different designs of ships, interiors, um, maps, sky yeah. maps. Uh, they were inputting different uh, things that they use that are organic in nature. Mm -hmm. um, it was a lot. And it, I had a huge headache afterwards. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, well, I, much I think... Yeah, I think Preston worries that he got you into this. I'm positive that you clearly were already there. And I think <laughs> that it was just destiny. Destiny that you two hooked up together to work at this. Okay. I think as in my case, they knew who he was, told me about him, wanted me to go to him. And but you just sort of gravitated to one another. Somehow you appeared in his life. I mean, how you met his brother is fantastic. You met his other sister-in-law, introduced you to, to Marco, which put him into their family, put you into their family, right? I think, yeah. am I right? Yeah. And it's just, I think it, I think it's just meant to be, you know, I don't think anybody has to worry about dragging anybody anywhere. I think you two were meant to work together big time. I really do. <laughs> Yeah. But well, we sure had fun at conventions. I mean, I'd always drag you along and you'd sell your artwork. I'd sell my books and we had a blast. We for... to... Yeah. We talked to some amazing people right off the street. You know, yeah, do I you remember, remember seeing time? a government guy. Yeah. Do you remember the time me. we were? In... Go ahead. I, he came up to me all dressed up like a government guy. And he said, he looked at me while I was messing with my pictures. He said, I've seen that before. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I can't, I, I don't remember the name of the person that was just up, but you said that they were taking your memories. Was that um, somehow negative for you or was it a positive experience knowing that they were reviewing your memories and looking at them? When you were a little girl, yeah. You said there um, that you said nice. they said they're taking your memories. Uh, didn't that disturb you, or which memories were they taking? Um, and was there a contract? I just, a contract. I just took it contract, for face value. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just kind of complied. I was a very compliant person at the time, although I had a horrible temper, but. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but, uh, well, do you know what memories they were looking at? Are you cognizant of that? They were looking, they were taking the memories of their visit. Ah, okay. Of their visit um, with you. In other words, they were taking it from you so you didn't remember? Is that what you're saying? Yes, definitely. Okay. They didn't want me to talk to anybody about it. Okay, so they weren't just flying into your whole memories. We're just erasing that episode, correct? That's what I believed when I was okay. little. That's what okay. I thought. Yeah, I but did I find other cases. I, I did find other cases of people describing having little white rods being put into their feet. A couple of them. Okay. So, so that's not entirely unique. And yeah, as far as pe people saying they're recording my memories or taking my memories, I've heard that sort of thing many times. That is often well, when contact starts too. Why did they put rods in their feet? Um, I'm going to tell you, I, I have experience with this and I know exactly what they were doing to you. Um, they weren't sticking them in your feet. They go along the bottom of your foot. And you can just see it up on the other side, you know, so it kind of looks like they're going in, but it's they're they're. You know how they pull electrodes on your chest when you're in the hospital and they're listening to you breathe, they're listening to your heartbeat, how many times you you know respirate and things like that in your pulse. They were 
listening to your body. And sometimes little kids, it's easier instead of invading your mind and getting what they want, they pull it that way. In other words, they can read you that way through your feet. It's really weird. And what I find interesting about that is a nurse, everything we do to infants, especially newborns, is through their feet. If their heart stops, we pound the foot and it starts to heart back up. If we need them to calm down, we rub their feet, manipulate the ankle. There's a billion things you can do with the feet on even adults that manipulate the body systems, including the brain. So I have a feeling that's what they were doing. They were um, psychically connecting to you that way. It was their way of connecting. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right. Well, it's like re reflexology, right? I mean, there's all kinds of pressure points on the bottoms of your feet. Right. Yeah. Ollie, just put it up. Reflex. Yeah. Yep. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, sorry about the little audio clicks. Um, we're not sure where that's coming from, but we'll try to get through it. Um, it's so, from uh, the space things <laughs> from EP. I know. i'll be honest with you i have a cousin who passed last night and and we had a very close relationship growing up and it may be that he's bugging us it's either that or we do have incoming uh cme right now this very second and it's messing with the signal so and i'm gonna go with reason number two basically so it was a pretty yeah. big one and we are being impacted right now so yeah. yeah. Sorry about that, guys. We're doing the best we can. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you had, I remember once we were doing a CE5 in Topanga Canyon, just a little yeah. group, and you came along. I think it was one of the few times you ever came along. Uh -huh. And you had a sighting, right? Remember that? Big one. Yeah, big giant one. You were sit, You were facing me, and it came behind you. It was a big giant UFO. It looked like a blue star and it had rays coming off it and everything. And it yeah. lit up the whole, it lit up the whole mountain behind me. Did you see that Preston, that it lit up? Yeah, well, I turned and looked at you and I saw your face go <gasps> and it was all <laughs> lit up in blue light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was it. That's what I saw. Yeah, yeah. I had an, when, it, when this first started, this is the other thing. I know that we're, Bob Lazar and uh, some other guy, I can't remember his name right now. Uh, this noise we're hearing is a good wiretap. And um, this is part of life for Preston and I anyway. So yeah, and you're a definitely experiencer and they probably want, are listening in on this conversation. So just so you know. Yeah. 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 I'm very protected. Um, I think uh, something watches over me and it's very particular about who um, mingles with me and stuff like that. And I'm not sure, but uh, I think I was here to do something very specific and of service for the ETs. I used to yes. sit around with, my, with Preston and tell him, oh, we're working for ET, <laughs> you know? That's our job. Right. <laughs> and yeah, and you're not going anywhere until it's done. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it became clearer yeah. and clearer to me as the years went on that that's absolutely true. Because I do remember a time we were at a convention and you were doing live drawings for experiencers. You'd sit down and draw their ET. And you did it for this lady. And she's describing it and you're doing your police sketch drawing. Like, how big was the nose? How big is the head? Is this right? And you're finishing it. And because you always you kind of psychically hook up with people. I, I watch it happen. And she, she's looking at the drawing and you find you're getting it's forming and you're getting it almost done. And suddenly she jolts and she, her eyes get all teary. And she actually completely broke down. She started weeping. Yeah. Um, That's happened that, more than once. Yeah, you did that for yeah. Barbara Lamb, <laughs> for her experience. That's uh, a trigger, probably. It opens it, it opens them up, you know, because um, I don't know how many people have photographed ETs. I know you have, haven't you, yes, Sally? Yeah. Well, not ETs yeah. in per se, but I have a photographic memory, so I remember what they look like really, really well. 
you know, details, everything. Um, it's in real time for me. Um, but I do get their craft and I've seen so many of them, you know, over the years yeah. that I know what they are. Um, it's hard for me when I'm on board to get anything because any like cameras with film, regular conventional 35 millimeter cameras, uh, the light, if the radiation is so heavy around us in the compartment that um, it just blows the film and you can't see anything. Like all you see is a big white light. If you try to use digital on board, it knocks the power off the camera because we're in an electromagnetic field. And it's, you know, we're in a Faraday caged environment, but the camera is still being bombarded with it outside that stasis field around me and the others. And uh, so you can't get anything. Every time one of their emitters, you know, pulses, it knocks everything electronic out. So the camera wouldn't last on board anyway. It's really hard to get about them. You know, I know uh, Stan Romanek got some really good pictures. I saw a couple of his and nearly died because he got it. Okay. And they, then they, they disavowed him and went after him and ruined his life. And uh, so, oh, God, I love this one. This is a good no. one. Now, this is one of my favorite, Christy, that you did. You yeah. sat down with this guy. I'm sure you remember him. Um, I think I yes. call him Phil. He's a car mechanic. We went to his house. He had cr crystals hanging down. They're such high energy. Uh -huh. But he was part yeah. of the Coronado Island UFO incident. Right. And oh. You really wow. hooked up to him well. And, just, and he's one of the people I saw kind of become really emotional. Yeah. I like this because you actually got the fact that there's an iris and a pupil in there. Okay. They wear lenses to protect their eyes and you're almost hinting at the color behind the lens. And I love that. I was like, Oh my God, that's it. You know, that's what they look like. That's it's not as dark as people think in low light. They look really black dark, but the lighter it is outside, the more you can see inside that lens that's covering their eye. And it, it, I was like, Oh, look, but you did so good at that. That was amazing to me. Yeah, he. I think well, the ET to, told him that. Yeah, I think the ET told him that. That he asked, "Are you old?" And he said, "Yeah, I'm really old. <laughs> this is an old gray." Uh -huh. Exactly, and that's what they look like when they're old. They do wrinkle up like we do. You know, they're not perfect forever. Well, none of us are. You know, that was just like, wow. You know, it's beautiful. You did a good job. Really good job. Thank. You. Thanks. I think when I do art for people, it brings it into their world. It makes it more physical instead of yeah. kind of in that other realm that they're always associating it with. So maybe that's why they react the way they do. You know. Yeah. John Lanigan wants to know, are they affected by our gravity in a negative way? Um, that would be a new question, Dolly. <laughs> uh, yes, um, they have, they're used to very much less gravity, uh, high percentage less gravity than we are. Their lungs are pretty big because they're in an environment where there's no pressure going in on them from gravity or air pressure. And what happens when they get here is, is they have a certain amount of time they can be in our environment and then they start to feel crushed and they're, how they oxygenate goes down there and they become hypoxic and they can die. Uh, so yeah, it's um, not a good situation for them at all. That's amazing. So you work in a lot of different mediums too. I mean, it's not just, you started out with pen and ink, right? Uh -huh. But you worked yes. in, you've done sculpture, uh, uh -huh. beadwork, right. um, oil painting, Yes. Which is your favorite medium? Um, gosh. It all depends on on what comes through the best, I guess. Uh, I really love to paint. I love painting watercolor, oils, um, acrylic. I love it all. I don't like airbrushing. That's why I love Photoshop because I get an airbrush effect. You know, this is the acrylic painting. Um, oh yeah, that's one. Uh, whoops. <laughs> Somebody's messing with my computer. Uh, 
Yeah, I do yeah. pen and ink painting. Uh, this is my one of my favorite um, pen and. I like and, this. Yeah, that one I love. I love doing mixed media. Do you have just a feeling like today I'm going to use pen and ink just, and then another day know, maybe charcoal or watercolor? You decide. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it depends on what I'm feeling. Right now I've been painting a lot. So pen and ink is very tedious. You know, every single yeah. little textured mark you see there is is a little line. So it's like carving wood, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Which you but, do as well. I remember you did a stone carving of a man uh, being uh, attacked by a cougar. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that. You gave it to Stephen, my I brother. Do. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Like, I remember. Wow. It. Yeah, that yeah. was amazing. I'm like, why did you do that? She you said, well, that was what was in the stone. That's what you saw in it. You just kind of yes. edged it out. <laughs> I thought that was yeah. really cool. Like with the ghost stuff, I love painting because it gets kind of this transparency going. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. With the ghost stuff. Right. And, uh, and there's a little bit of pencil and charcoal in there. Mm -hmm. But I think with artists, that are working in service like I am for other people, especially contactees and experiencers, yeah. they have to pretty much walk outside of themselves to really capture um, what the client wants. And uh, it's not easy. It's very hard to try and achieve that, you know. Um, I keep wanting to walk in and put in my own little thing. And I think uh, if I was ever to mentor an artist, I'd w that's the first thing I'd try to teach them is, is to just use their techniques and then um, really hear what the other person is saying and become a police sketch artist. And nowadays they have programs for all of that. I don't know if they have programs for ETs. That would be cool though, to put together yeah. a program for that. Yeah. But, we had uh, a, somebody named Janice who came in late and she just wanted to tell you that she loves your artwork so much. She thinks you're wonderful. Oh, Her name is Janice Conant. Yeah, Christine has done some awesome artwork. I got here late, but want to acknowledge her beautiful work. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, sorry about the clicking, you guys. I know some of you are talking about it. Just not we a whole lot we can do this. about it. Okay, here's something from the desolate one. Always wonder the technology that floats somebody through a wall, that floats someone through a wall. If it's a dream like abduction, you can see anything can happen. They still have that ability. What are they? So yeah, that's probably a, a you question, Dolly. How how do we teach blow people through a wall? Um, they uh, you know, when you see the blue light come down, inside the blue light is an energy ribbon that uh, some people can see and some people can't, and it's a dimensional uh, ribbon. Uh, it is, in other words, you phase in and out of third dimension into fourth and fifth dimension while you're in this light, and they can bring you up through walls, anything they can, because they change you in, you, you move, it's like going through a light gate, halfway through the gate, you're completely free of all space and time. And your body sees your the particles of your body are no longer cohesive in this dimension. And you can go through anything because you move right through it like a ghost. And uh, that's how they do it. <laughs> that's Very amazing. Cool, huh? All right, Santana Barris says, Preston, when is your next CE5 meetup? Oh, gosh. I did them for years and had some amazing sightings that way. I haven't done any recently, and I don't really have any plans at this point to do any. But if I do, I will certainly announce it on my Facebook page. 
Woodland Goblin says, doesn't the insectoids have the large black eyes that are not lenses, but they're actually eyes? Um, I want to tell you a secret about uh, the mantids. They're mantids. Um, they have, um, they are shaped or look like it, but they, they're not exoskeletal anymore. They have inner skeletons and they have flesh outside of it. And their arms are in the shape of that, you know, insect looking development and heads. Their eyes are more human than insect. And yes, they wear lenses, all of them do. Uh, they all see in ultraviolet light. They all see in um, infrared light. And uh, the spectrum of light coming from our sun is massively bright to them, and they have to protect their, their retinas from it. And so that's why they all wear lenses. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, we're going to put up a picture right up of a uh, mantid right now that you drew. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Yeah, you got it. He has skin. See, his skeleton is on the inside. They developed into that, and they are humanoid. They're just shaped differently according to whatever their you know uh, evolution was. But they have the same uh, genome. They just look like a uh, mantid, sort of. And they do protect their eyes. They have to. Um, they see enough. We, you know, okay. Here it is. We mostly have three uh, cones, color cones in our eyes. And they have more than four or five. And they see all colors of the spectrum just about in ranges. We have no clue. They hear better than we do. And their their brain is so developed that they perceive psychically things that we can't see, feel, hear, or touch psychically. And um, they're very well developed. And it's like, it's like if you're autistic and you say, oh, bright light, I can't take the colors or things like that. That's how they feel about everything. That's their issue and they wear dark lenses for that reason oh. all right we have to take a quick station break i just want to say to everyone thanks for joining us you're watching the light gate episode two my name is preston dennett my co-host is dolly saffron experiencer and we are interviewing my dear sweet sister-in-law christine kitsara dennett and we're streaming on multiple platforms roku facebook youtube United Paranormal Radio Network, 107.7. And 105.3. Yes. So yeah, thanks for joining us. We're trying to fix this uh, clicking. Christy, can you try maybe turning down your speaker a little bit? That's a suggestion. Yeah. Um, okay. do you, your sound. And just so you know, this uh, whole, all of this streams from New Orleans. Uh, it's a pretty cool place, and that's where it's coming from. So, the United Public Radio Network, UFO Paranormal Radio Network, 105.3 and 107.7 P uh, FM in New Orleans on the radio. FM. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, we're still getting some annoying clicking. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, we're trying. We're working on it. So Jerry E says to me, Preston, how about posting some stories about hybrids living with humans? I did actually do a YouTube episode on that. Uh, I think it's called They Walk Among Us. It's one of my top 10 uh, episodes, but that reminds me. It's a good segue. <laughs> Christy, you and I were at the Thousand Oaks MUFON when this kid walks up. Real tall, very slender, and huge eyes. <laughs> Weird eyes. And he talked to me, and then he went over to you. And you remember this? Um, and yes, you I turned do. to me afterwards. Was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you turned to me and said, I think he was an ET. <laughs> he had I always oval remember. pupils. He had yeah. oval pupils. Yeah. And he said he was an ambassador for a federation. I seem to recall him saying that. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, I do remember he was just very sweet and very kind of just a gentle energy just super kind and just different and uh -huh. i was kind of impressed and i was interested to see what your impression would be and you turned to me so i think he was et <laughs> i was like oh <laughs> yeah. yeah i think they do they walk among us. his eyes were different yeah 
I, so I, here's uh, a question. If there is a double abduction, can one remember and the other forget anything of them being there too? Uh, and the desolate one is asking this. Um, well, I don't call them abductions. They are contacts. And yes, some people who are a little bit more psychic have a tendency to remember more of what happened to them. If they won't let go of it. They can't be talked out of it. And uh, it's really interesting. Watch it happens in families sometimes or friends. You know, you'll they'll have a contact and they'll separate and go the different ways. And then years later, one will bring it up and the other one says, what are you talking about? I don't remember that. And then they'll keyword to them about something and they'll go, oh, wait a minute. Maybe I do remember that a little bit. And as they talk it out, the other one starts to regain the full remembrance of it. it. It happens a lot. It's not uncommon at all. Oh, yeah. I hear that all the time. One person. Well, Christy, with you and your sister, she had no memory of these guys coming to the room. But I interviewed her and she did have some memory of, I think it was a blue bean or something um, coming out of the closet. Um, she had a memory of... Uh, 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 Iliad, which is, um, it has a big, huge, fleshy part behind its head. Mm -hmm. and it has a little face with big eyes. Let me mm -hmm. see if I can find a picture of it. Um, that's what she had a memory of, and it was more a dream memory than an actual physical memory. So... All right. Yeah, because I do remember that. I interviewed her. Yeah, mm -hmm. she um, had a memory of this guy. Oh, okay. Wow, that's amazing. That's oh, that's cool. Um, they exist. They do. Those are not our dimension. Those are not in our dimension. They are outside of us. And uh, if she was seeing, they're usually fifth dimensional beings. There's a wide range of how they exist in the fifth dimension. Some are corporeal, some are not. That's one of them. And they kind of look like the grays, which is amazing to me. And I think they're related to them somehow. They're just more developed. So. Yeah, this is the what? other where yeah. I got. It was through a friend of mine. Okay. Who I hung out with for a while. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, I know friends. who you're talking about. And I call uh, she had a few of her experiences and I've had a lot of experiences with her. Um, um, yeah, you're talking about question. <laughs> I'm gonna answer real quick. It says, for Dolly, if an ET would wish so, could he randomly appear in my room through any form of teleportation? Also, can they be invisible on demand? He, uh, I wouldn't call it teleportation. I would call it um, them phasing in and out. Okay. The light beings don't need any help doing it. They, it's a natural talent of theirs. They just do it. They can, they, they're not really in this dimension with us. They're somewhere between and they're capable of going anywhere on demand at will. Um, and sometimes we react to seeing them and they will take what's in our mind and show you the safe thing to look at at first until you feel comfortable with what's going on. And then they'll reveal themselves to you. Um, uh, some people won't remember it anyway, and some will. Uh, they don't teleport. Um, they're capable of it, but it is risky business here, especially with everything that's going on. So they don't do it. It's like flying here. It's dangerous right now. And so they don't teleport. That's asking a lot. So. Wow. All right, I'll answer this one. Woodland Goblin. Does anybody here believe the whole 1950s George Adamski contactee experiences with our space brothers. Uh, for those of you who don't know George Adamski, he was probably one of the first contactees to go public. He photographed a bunch of UFOs in the presence of other people, by the way. But in 1950 something in Desert Center, California, uh, walked up to a landed UFO in the presence of four other people who were some distance away. I believe that did happen. There were footprints. The four other witnesses have never retracted. He ended up writing a book called Inside the Spaceship, which was, I don't know if I fully believe all of that in that book. Some of it was a little bit off the charts in terms of what we know now. But I think, yeah, genuinely, he is a contactee. 
And I think he did good work in popularizing this subject. I'm just not sure if I buy the whole story that he put forth. It's it's pretty controversial. Hope that answers the question. Okay, I'll answer this one. I've been waiting for this one. Why can't the outlet contactees remember so after a time it becomes common knowledge to the point where a cover-up would be impossible? Um, you remember, you're just not letting yourself remember. They have nothing to do whether you remember or not. Hysteria and fear can cause you to drop a memory. It's like, it's like um, we have a tendency, you know, to split personality in our brain. Your brain can also cover memories with nothing. It'll lay it back and not let you see it because it upset you so much or freaked you out or moved your realization paradigm so far out of the real that you won't remember unless you're keyworded back to it. ET will tell you things that'll help you remember. They'll give you suggestive keywords so that a later date when you're comfortable with that knowledge, you remember. That's exactly how I remembered. I was fed up and over it, and I spent a great deal of time getting that stuff back. And yeah, it, this happens with Bigfoot experiences, ghost experiences as well, which brings me to a segue. Segue, okay. Christy, you had a really interesting experience with Marco, with a ghost, in the the haunted armoire. Do you remember that one? Can you tell that story? Yeah. Um, I was babe. I was uh, house sitting my mother's house in uh, Woodland Hills, and um. I woke up out of a dead sleep and I saw my mother's armoire uh, door open. She has a hanging handle. It hangs like this. And in order to open the door, you have to push the handle up and then it clicks open. And the handle or the little lever just went up all by itself. And that's when I tried to wake up Marco, but he was in a deep psychic sleep there was i was shaking him and the door opened really slow and then it saw me shaking him and so it closed it really slow and i'm like oh man he missed out <laughs> you know? wow. he could have seen that what did you so, see inside the cat the, the armoire what, um, was there being in there that you saw not nothing it just was dark somebody was trying to oh. open it i have a feeling it was my mom she was psychically wow. or astrally opening the almoire to get something out of it but it yeah, was, i interviewed it was your mom people. by the way huh i, I interviewed your mom because she had a beam of light come through the roof of the house and chase her and i think <laughs> her friend around the house <laughs> yes. it came right through the <laughs> 14. yeah oh my she was 14. God. <laughs> well, this is just, just more proof to me that you're coming from a family of contactees and this was yes, all absolutely. meant yeah. to be. Right. But Definitely. I've had a lot of psychic experiences with you. I remember one time Mark was driving. You were in the front seat and I was in the back seat. And there was a big truck next to us. So you couldn't really see the cross traffic. And the light turned green. And you, you turned to Marco and said, beware of red light runners. And so he didn't go through the green light. And at that point, a giant RTD bus went whoosh right through the red light in front of us. I remember, I remember that. I, I screamed, oh my, oh my God, how did you know? <laughs> that freaked me out. I mean, it really did. You that remember that? That was just something that came through, you know? It was like, eh, better say something. <laughs> you saved our lives. I mean, you seriously did. Yeah, you definitely, you definitely contacted. You definitely <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, <laughs> prevent a person from remote viewing or astral projecting. Um, no, ETs cannot prevent you from doing anything. They believe uh, we are autonomous beings as well as they are, and we have a right to do what we want to do. That's your personal decision, not theirs, and they would never interfere with you at all. So, yeah. I want to go get something on the kitchen table and bring it back because. It, it relate. It's a cool story. I'll be right back. Thirty seconds, not even. <laughs> <laughs> it's just you and me now. Yeah, I know. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Let's freak him out. <laughs> um, I, 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 I've been um, learning about his relationship with you and everything. And he talks about you constantly. No kidding. Okay. And yeah. uh, he's told me many, many stories. He's only bringing up this much of it 
you know? He has stuff all over this house that you've produced, made, or whatever. It's everywhere, okay? Yeah. And I'm amazed by all of it. I really am. I've got one in my hands right now, and I want to show it. But first, I want to tell the story. Okay. <laughs> it was so cool because I started to get this weird obsession to do this art piece, and I, and I wouldn't leave my mind. And I finally turned to Christy one day. We were on a walk through Topanga. And I'm like, I'm, I've got this weird obsession. I want to uh, paste clear colored glass onto another piece of glass. And I remember you turned to me and it's like, oh, that's your Christmas present. And here it is. <laughs> you, this is what I saw <laughs> in a really vision. Still have it. Yeah, yes. and you can't really see the colored part of it really well here. Gorgeous but, though. When the light hits, it's gorgeous. Absolutely. But yeah, I mean, you. This is what I saw in a vision, and you turned to me. I remember, like, oh, you saw the present I'm making. You, you made them for everybody in the family. Yeah. But I still have this thing. It's so cool. It's like a, you know, you stick a candle in here. Hello, you see. Yeah. There, let's see. Oh, there, now you can see. <laughs> yeah, but this is this is how close we connected were because occasionally we would have telepathy. I remember we were doing a writing project. We we're trying to think of a name. I'm like, what's a good name? What's a good name? And I thought of one, and then you turned to me and said, How about I think it was Jennifer or something? I'm like, oh <laughs> you read my mind. It was so cool. <laughs> of all the people I've been with, I think we had yeah, a, such too. an amazing spiritual connection. Absolutely. Well, you're my brother from another time, <laughs> you know? You're like we, somebody we Dana Matthews before. wants to know if you sell those, Christina. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Maybe you can make a YouTube video on how to make them. I bet you people would oh, yeah. do that. <laughs> that would yeah. be fun. Yeah. 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 Oh, the by God, the way, you do have a YouTube show. channel. Yeah. Christy does have a YouTube I channel. Should, she... I, you know what I should do is sit down and Draw for Dolly and record it. That That's would be amazing. Okay. Yeah. I know that <laughs> you mean like right now? <laughs> uh, no. Oh, I don't know. I'm not. We'll, do it, we'll, we'll do it on a day when it's just you and me. How's that? Okay. All right. Yeah. Let's see the desolate one. Grays aren't like. parasitic. They're just fascinated by our emotions. They have seen the other side maybe or the boundaries of heaven or hell and they operate to both by will um wow let's see uh unpack that we are, known <laughs> by, we are known by et for millions to billions of years we are their children we all exist because of them uh they are uh, nothing uh nothing in human form is a parasite at all um they know our emotions they have the same ones they're just highly developed and and they have developed to the point that they are um ultra responsible morally responsible entities and they love in ways that we haven't yet discovered and or understand and um what they are doing while they're here with us is gauging how well we're developing and how our evolution is occurring they ask us questions when they talk to you to see how you're doing they want to know how you feel about everything they want to know what's in your mind and what's in your heart and that's how they deal with us and sometimes people don't think about it from that perspective but that's what's going on they care about us and they're worried about how we're doing and they will ask you questions like that. It's not that they don't have emotions, they're worried about ours. Okay. Christy, what do you think of past lives? You have some past life memories, don't you? Yeah, I do. Um, I'm asking I, a question. Do you and Preston have past lives together? Because I think you do. Yeah, well, I'm oh, leading yeah. to that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we were, I think we were monks. I like, think so too. That makes total sense. Okay. <laughs> highly, highly spiritually developed. Yes. Wow. <laughs> what, what time period do you think? Um, I'm not sure, but it was a time when um, we really took our research seriously, and I think that's why we fell into working with each other so easily again, because it kind of came back, you know. <laughs> yeah. I think that you're in the same uh, grouping of soul, you know, in other words, you are working together constantly back and forth. I think that everybody in your 
your immediate soul group have all been back and forth with one another. Okay. And I'm including myself in that group, but your husbands, your wives and your family, all of you are very heavily connected to one another and are advanced in ways that uh, amaze me even. You know, yeah, I remember being, yeah, I know Marcus had ET experiences. Yeah, um, one of these days I'm going to He, had, him it, and he has an implant in his yeah. elbow that I found, but it's dissolving. It's going away now. Oh, good. Yeah. Which I think is interesting. Oh. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I remember we, we talked to a psychic once. We, we, we talked to a psychic once. I think her name was D, And she talked about how I was a pirate and you were there. And that made total sense to me because I think you had pirate dreams. Is a young girl and I'm a totally obsessed with ships. <laughs> I mean, completely. <Yeah. laughs> I thought it was my family. Everybody was very uh, against the Spanish side of my family. I found out later when I got my DNA testing, I don't have a drop of Spanish blood in me. So what the heck were they talking about? Right? <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have spirit so, memory, not genetic. There you go. Yeah. That one's that one's so, sometimes. <laughs> But um, this one happen. spirit that would come through, he'd keep me in a white box and he was all dressed up like a pirate. And I would have dreams with him over and over wow. again when I was little. Wow. That's amazing to me. Okay, Dana Matthews. Hi, Dana. How are you doing? She says, I would love to know if there's any truth to the being, uh, to the being in the matrix. There sure are a lot of people who think we are the whole thing makes no sense to me no there's no matrix no 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 no, no. this is real time you're in you're in a very physical 3d uh your body you're here now you're experiencing everything with five senses and then the six that you either employ or you don't employ and you're here for a reason and nothing can stop you from this nothing you decided to be here so no there's no matrix you're not lying in a cocoon somewhere, no. hooked up the wires, no. hallucinating all of this. I think where this honestly comes from is the fact that, in a sense, we're projecting down into the third dimension from our right. true home. Right, exactly. Um, yeah. So that's where I think that comes from, yeah. honestly. Yeah. I don't agree with yeah. the whole Matrix yeah. idea. It's an interesting concept. A really good movie. <laughs> right. It's science fiction, not fact. Okay? <laughs> it's not true. So... You, you had some out-of-body experiences, at least a couple of really good ones, right? Because I remember we went to classes together. That was when I was learning how to do it. And uh, I remember you had at least I a couple did. of really good ones. It, yeah, it do you really freaked me out. Because <laughs> I was buzzing. What? Right. That's the vibratory state. Right. Do you, remember, do you remember what happened? I don't remember specifically what you did. I went through the um, wall and it was like really dense. And I remember just pushing myself through it. And uh, the vibration was so intense, you know. Um, that was the one memory I have that's very vivid. Uh -huh. I remember that. There's other times where I've left my body and I kind of use that exercise now where I want to um access my higher spirit and have my higher spirit insert itself into me so i become one with um the flow mm -hmm. and so my experience now is stepping back out of or stepping back accessing spirit because i seem to access it better when i'm out of body and then bringing it into my body. And I just recently figured this one out when I was meditating. Yeah. You know, you're just making the connection, right? Your physical mind and your consciousness, which is your spirit, are finally hooking up inside your head and you're visualizing it that way, which is good. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. So your physical mind can now hear your consciousness talking straight to it. That's, that's a direct line. That's the way it's supposed to be. So that's awesome. That is good. Keep going. Because it gets yeah. to the point where I, I you're had on a, all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that's what I access when I um, do meditations and stuff for other people and for myself yeah. and everything. But it's, um, 
it's interesting to me that um, I feel like we're really big. We're just these huge beings. And this part of my physical being is a section of it, you know. Um, and I've done a lot of meditation for people with photographs. Uh, I, photo I meditate on their photograph. And for some odd reason, my eyes is the conduit to seeing spirit in other people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's, that's like really psychometry. Yeah, really exactly. He's ex but, you're exactly right. Yeah. I remember we went to an antique store yeah. once, and you sat down in a I'd chair like and jumped out of it. And do that. I'd like to be with ET and do that. I'd like to to actually be awake and just look right. into their spirit. You I'm can. Sure you It'll happen. Intend for it to happen, and it will. I had this very, very powerful dream of being on a ship, and they're leading me around. And these are all human-looking guys in jumpsuits. And I think this is honestly real. I really do, <laughs> because it was this huge ship. And you know, I'm kind of a jokey guy, and they were very <laughs> solemn and kind of serious and looking at me like, you know, behave. <laughs> and they led me to this other part of the craft, and I'm like, oh my god, there's Christy. And you were drawing for them. You were sitting there. And drawing they they wanted me to see you there and they took me to another oh, part really? of the ship water. yeah i told you that but you didn't remember so <laughs> be, i mean I being there frank, frank strangest um thor i think is his name yeah valiant thor 1950 i know who yeah, you're talking about valiant thor. i think it's them that you're talking about when was this well, this was years ago. These were, yeah, this was, years, they were human looking ETs for sure. Yeah. yeah. They were all identical that. kind of looking. <laughs> right. But it, I will say this was a dream or at least that's how I remembered it. But I'm starting to get stuff coming back to me big time. You know, one time I did go, I asked your permission if I could do a past life reading on you out of body. Uh -huh. uh, and I did. And I went to your house and it took me a while to get there. And I'm like, okay, show me Christy in a past life. And you were there, and you started to look a little bit like a man. <laughs> and then uh -huh. I saw you had a military coat on, and there were, I don't know what you call them, chevrons on your shoulders. And it shocked that me so much sense. I got pulled back. But that kind of makes sense because you are a bit of a warrior. <laughs> I mean, you do well, have that I've sort of. I've been more a man than a woman. I know that. I have a lot of male energy in me. My husband, Marco, um, we're together because I've lost him so many times uh, as a young man, or we we finally got to live a full life together. <laughs> finally. <Aww. laughs> yes. But so you been, think you're twin flames, do you think? Um, yeah, I think so. It, we're so different, but in in a way, we really need to, to we really needed to be together on a very earth level of yeah. marriage and kids and all that other stuff, you know. Yeah. But he's, well, you met him under pretty unusual circumstances, up. right? Huh? I mean, you met him very very synchronistically. Isn't that yes. right? He drove by or something. I forget the story, but it was. Interesting. He met me on a bus. He was 14. <laughs> wow. I wow. was, um, I'm four years older than him. So he met me on a bus. I, my sister and I uh, missed our bus. So my sister talked the bus driver into taking us to high school. Marco was not in high school. And he was this little kid, and I was really mad. I didn't want to go to school. And uh, he came, he looked at me. He's like this big, huge eyes like this. <laughs> Hi. Wow. Smiling. Wow. <laughs> and then um, he said to somebody on the bus, Marco, um, that, what did you say to him? <laughs> Oh, he's, he picked me, and the kid on the bus said, you don't want to go with her. She's <laughs> bad. Oh, my. 
You were a little Hellion in school, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, I was bad. Thank God I, I met Benton. He became a Buddhist monk, and I turned to Buddhism, and it really did literally save my life. Wow. Um, yeah. I, yeah I, ended, a, I ended up with the Hindis, <laughs> with the oh, Krishnas, okay. and they stopped me from being an alien, too. They really helped me with that. Absolutely, yeah. Isn't that funny? Yeah. 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 <laughs> See, we're sisters. I was loyal. Yeah, I think so. I, I I feel that. When I met you, I went into shock because I saw your face and I said, geez, I know this girl. I know her, you know? And uh, I yeah. thought, how is that possible? And I chewed it up for a while and I just said, I decided to, like, I know it's true, but I'm letting it unfold naturally, you know? Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll get to we'll get to it when it happened you know when we both hit it at the same time so but i know we're sisters too yeah. i really when do when we touch when we touch yeah that's when it'll happen that's when it's gonna happen yeah, yeah. which needs to be sooner than later <laughs> we gotta get you out here we come out there or something i don't know yeah well when it well, happens it'll be the perfect time yep absolutely well, it's amazing to me that you hooked up with Marco and he had a UFO experience and then this became such a huge part of my life. And I wonder if there, I mean, it seems like there's guidance here because I've seen this with other contactees, but they yeah. find out after they're married that they're both had experiences as kids. <laughs> so yeah. I, it feels like there is guidance there to yeah. some extent. Aren't you of the opinion, Preston, that people are guided by ET even like we're, we're pushed to meet up. In other words, some people, you know, it's like, no, this person's going to meet this person and they work it out to somehow you end up together. You know, it, you circle each other for a while and then boom, you're there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Christy basically saved my life because I was lo losing my mind. I was just, after my mom died, I had an enormous amount of fear and I could not yeah. reconcile the dreams and lucid dreams and OBEs I was having with my belief system and it eventually just crumbled away. <laughs> so, so, and at the same time, UFOs, and OBEs came together hand in hand, which I don't think is a Well, you made that step, you know, you decided right. yeah. to walk forward. Yeah, but you were there and yeah. I'd sit, we'd sit and talk for hours late into the night. In fact, yeah. when I had my we major- find That's what he's saying. You were the- I was at your house. Yeah. You're in Mark's house. Yeah. And in 1992, had just left. You know, this is when you were living in Woodland Hills on, you know, what's the street, Gallandrina? Uh -huh. um, and I just left your house, and that's when a little ball of light came down in front of my car, and I ended up having missing time. And that's I where I turned up. around. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I went driving I by there. Yeah. Yeah. I tried that to find the exact house. Right over from where you grew up. We were separated by a hill. <laughs> so yeah. So right. used to go, whoop, whoop, you know. <laughs> right. I, there's another thing I wanted to bring up because we're in the last half hour now. And I don't want to okay. forget this because you know, I call her Wendy. I think you know who I'm talking about. She showed me the UFO. Uh, we became great yeah. friends. With, she's in Australia now. Yes. Um, <laughs> um, and she showed me a Bigfoot. Well, I mean, I had a Bigfoot experience with her just after you had one with her. Can we talk yes. Can we talk about that? <laughs> I call her Wendy she, because she doesn't want to be. <laughs> well, we saw two deers. And at the time, we were. she was telling me that when the ETs come, there's always, they always come as animals sometimes. And um, we saw two deers just standing there looking at us. So we, she said, go over there and park. So we went and parked, the deers ran away, skippered away, and uh, we walked out. And all of a sudden we heard somebody running up the hill and she freaked out. I didn't want to go, but she said, we gotta go, we gotta go. And we hopped into the car and drove away. But I wanted to stop and see what was, was running up. I wanted to see him, you know? But she she couldn't handle it. <laughs> it was on two legs, though, right? Yeah, you had the impression. Two legs. 
Yeah, because I had the same experience with her. We went driving out. This is in Acton in Southern California, right on the edge of the LA National Forest. And it was around, I think, just a week or two after that. She's like, I know where this Bigfoot lives. It's coming around the house. She was having all kinds of experiences. Her son saw it, her roommate, the neighbors were complaining. There were footprints, the branch on her tree. It went into the tree next to her house. It broke it. And she's mm -hmm. like, it's telepathically communicating with me. And and she was going on and on. She's like, I know where it lives. And we went out there, her and I. And no sooner had we stepped out of the car when this thing roared <laughs> um, really loud and for about mm, 10 seconds, which is long for a roar. And she starts screaming. And I'm uh -huh. running towards it. <laughs> it roared again. And then I knew exactly where it was because it wasn't uh -huh. far away. She's like, get back. So she and didn't run away. No, she ran she into the car. Oh, no, she did. She oh, was so okay. mad at me because I was running towards it. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> get back. We're, and we're leaving. <laughs> <laughs> we had so much fun with her. That's Do you funny. remember the time we went to a restaurant? And I think you were there. Yeah. And she's like, every time I go to a restaurant, they spill food on me. I'm just warning you. <laughs> And sure enough, what is it? boom, right in her lap. I had one little speck of sauce on my face. She's like, I, told I you. think she was quite magical. I think she created a lot of things. Um, she was one of those people, you know. Yeah, I mean, she taught us a lot how to manifest. Yeah. She can manifest anything. She's like, I want a boat. She got a boat. Now I need a dock. She went down there to Marina Del Rey. Super expensive there and got a free docking. Couldn't believe it. She's like, we're going out now. We're going on adventures. I'm like, oh, okay. I had missing time with her for about two hours over at, uh, in Topanga at the restaurant. Um, oh, that's Hills. right. Yeah, I had missing time. I don't know what happened, but. We were sitting there at two o'clock, and then all of a sudden it was dark. Oh, wow. Yeah. No, I guess she remember? Weird. Did she say she remembered anything? No, and she seemed very nonchalant about it, which I thought found interesting because usually she got excited about things like that. Wow. Wow. And yeah. We'd be driving so, along with her. I remember we were driving along, and once she's like, Stop the car. And I'm like, Okay, okay. And it, She's like, look up. There's this tiny, itty bitty white dot way, way the heck up there. It's like, that's them. I don't know how the heck she saw that. There's just no I know. way. She probably <laughs> felt it before she saw it. Yeah. yeah. That's she was an amazing, amazing play, Topanga. Yeah, well, we had a lot of person ought to convince her to come out and uh, put her story up. You know, in other words, come out. With I did a YouTube interview with her. Yeah. It was audio only. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it was really cool because she uh -huh. showed me UFOs flat out like nobody ever. You were there, too, but you didn't see it. You and James. Yeah. Um, I was so mad yes. that you guys fell behind on the trail. <laughs> but, but, you know, the ETs came, too. They were f phasing in and out uh, through bushes the bushes would shake and then they'd phase and i would see them they were oh gosh, completely I solid. That. yeah i never saw there them any lights or anything they just kind of and i felt one push up against my body it was really weird um it wasn't solid it was more in another dimension but i did feel the sensation of them pushing on me which I thought was interesting. They wanted so anything to say about yeah. that, Dolly? <laughs> yeah, they wanted your attention flat out. <laughs> we're here. See? Yep. Yeah, they we did. To reach out to uh, them. Yeah. They were small. They were up to my chest. I'm five two. Yeah, so they're, they're AI. Like they're AI they're grays. They're they're um especially if it's a daytime occurrence, they'll they'll not show, but they want your attention. And sometimes they're getting ready to take you with them okay and if you were ignoring them and you, you didn't go but they'll they'll nudge you they'll try to communicate with you that way so um, no, that was at night yeah, right I, off the 210 freeway in pasadena 
Oh, and, oh, you were on the freeway. Well, you, not on the freeway. We had hiked off, off the freeway okay. up into the oh, wilderness. Okay. And huh. yeah, this huge UFO showed up. And okay. Christy and James were about 200 yards down the trail. And Wendy, yeah. as I call her, and I were jumping it. I mean, it was right, like right there in yeah. front of us. You told me it was golden, right? Yep. Yeah. Be beautiful golden sphere. Yeah. I've never seen anything. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, I think. I mean, it's just mm, hard to describe. Yeah. But yeah, Christy was there, but didn't see that, but saw like, <laughs> other stuff. So, so Christy, what do you think of all these experiences in your whole life path with, I mean, this is a, a whole gamut of stuff you've experienced. What it, I think it's amazing. I, 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 I came into the world kind of knowing that something was going to happen. Uh, I used to make butterflies go on my finger and stuff. <laughs> control my environment, you know. <laughs> you <go>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I pretty much knew a lot of stuff when I was a kid. Um, but I knew also I, I came here to live my life and live the human life, you know, yeah. just go through that. But now that I'm older, I seem to be slipping back to what I was when I was a little kid, where I'm kind of more open to the more um, extra terrestrial kind of things, you know, the yeah. extraordinary stuff. Right. And uh, it's really nice. I like it. I like communicating with nature and stuff. And, and have you ever had any, have you ever had any scary paranormal experiences or unpleasant? Um, I think like it's all in how you take those kind of things. Thank you. Uh, Your perception yeah, is, a, I, you know. Yeah, perception. Because I was pretty evil kid. I wasn't a good <laughs> you kid. You say that, I, I just don't see it, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> I was bad. I think, you know. <laughs> Pull legs off of bugs or anything uh, like okay, that. Okay, now I, I have the same experience as you. I was a hellion, okay? A hellion. And I didn't think of myself as evil, but I was an opportunist for life. And if I saw something and I wanted to experience it, boom, I did. And I didn't have any trouble taking anybody with me ever, you know? And uh, yeah. I just, I was in and out of everything, you know? I was just crazed with it. And it took a while to calm me down, literally. So <laughs> I can imagine that. It's it's so about you know truth coming about. out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, anything dark and evil that comes hopping away up, up to me, I just fill it with light. You know, I had exactly. a shadow being that followed me around a lot, and uh, um, finally it came into my room. It wouldn't come to me until one night, and it was during my meditation. And I did tell my monk friend about it, and he was worried mm -hmm. I was having some kind of psychotic break no. No, the real shadow being <laughs> and it was and i just sat there and i just started meditating and i just saw it fill up with light and colors and everything and it, i never saw it again so oh, wow i had a shadow being right up until about 2018 actually got a picture of it and uh i drove it crazy i, I had the opposite reaction i came after it and it, the last thing it did was flip me off and just leave me alone now, you know, because I was going to get it. Uh, it was like, no, don't quit bugging me. I'm coming after you. And I tried more than once, uh, tried to get it. And I guess it realized I can't fight with this. And it went away. So uh, yeah. I remember, yeah. Christy, we had an experience together, which was so incredible. I, I, I remember I actually wept in your arms afterwards because I'd never had that kind of turn on experience. It was very positive. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. It was just so in your face. And that's when we met Donna, I think was her name, a medium at the t-shirt company. But oh, wow. that's right. Table tapping. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I heard about this. You got to so, tell. Yeah. yeah. Tell the table tipping story. That, yeah. yeah, I was working at the t-shirt factory where we uh, did mass paintings on t-shirts and one of the women did table tapping or she knew somebody who did table tapping. We went, we were invited to go 
do the table tapping party like they did in the 1800s, you know, yeah. calling down Table spirits. tipping, it's called. Tipping, okay. Um, and we went down there and uh, there was a bunch of people, you know, getting drunk and all. And there was a table there, a little card table, I think. Some yeah. kind of, was it card table, I think? Oh, you weren't yeah. there. That's right. And, I, I went um, there the second time you brought me, yeah. Right, you went the second time. And this woman was so good at calling in spirits through the table. And uh, we'd have different people taking turns uh, table tipping with her. <laughs> and when wow. I did it, it was amazing. It was just amazing. So my girlfriend started doing it. And that's when Preston came along. And... Uh, she started doing it and uh i think we got the table almost levitated off the ground didn't we it was yeah we did. On a oh, you did yeah yeah we yeah. i brought a camera a compass of all kind whatever equipment i could find and i remember they were all sitting around the table i'm like eh, i don't know because it was a light table right and yeah. it, finally it was my turn and i'm coming there all scientific right <laughs> And finally, I said, okay, can I, everyone but me and Donna do it? And they said, okay. And then I'm like, well, it's Donna doing it. I'm like, Donna, if you could just put one hand. And she did it and still went right up on the side. I'm like, okay, just put one finger on the table. And that table went right up. And then I did it without her, without her at all. But you and I did it with her. And we got that table walking across the room. It was going whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And it went right up. Her, like, I'm trying to get it to levitate, right? And, yeah. it, and I'm like, levitate, levitate. And it, and it walked over to the staircase, which goes down, and it tipped over the staircase into a horizontal position. So that's right. close oh. levitation. And then yeah. we contacted yeah. my mom's spirit, and we actually talked to her. Uh -huh. I don't know if you remember that, but we built a little kind of Ouija board thing. It's the only yeah. time we've ever used a Ouija board, but it was homemade. Uh -huh. And we did the, all the meditation and white light, you know, so we were careful. I would not recommend Ouija unless you're working with an experienced medium. And she was. Yeah. But yeah, I, my mom came through, my mother. I'm like, what's the first thing you did when you died? And she said, laughed. It spelled out laughed. And then she said, saw phone. I'm like, what does that mean? She turned out she was reaching for the phone when she died of a heart attack. And then it said, took a nap. And then saw god that's what it spelled out and yeah like, oh i remember god. that wow that was with with donna at her house yeah donna yeah. stopped doing it because um a fire started all by itself that's right oh, and yeah. a, weird, a weird clicking and noise her her really on the floor. yeah so she wow. stopped doing it yeah you have to be careful when you do this kind of work Something negative would sometimes come in. That's but, right. But she was a physical medium, and that yeah. we took pictures, we took videotapes of it. We sent Do it you to. Still have them? Um, no, I sent it to this television program, Sightings, and they did not return it. I still have some photographs, okay. but they did not return. I was so upset. I was a consultant for that show back then. I'd send them stuff. Oh my goodness! But I'm like, I've got something for you. <clears throat> and, uh, Hmm. They never sent it back and still burns me up. Got to make yeah. copies. Yeah. Oh, it was a VHS tape. I don't know. Yeah, yeah I, I have a painting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. that's right. Yeah. I put that in one of my ghost books. <laughs> yeah. But that was a cool experience. I remember afterwards, I'm like, that was easy access to the paranormal. I'm like, oh, my God. We're talking about it. And I just, it, it collapsed. I mean, that was it. I knew then and there that this was real and it was a lot it for me to take. Grew into the physical world and it's hard for spirits to do that. They, uh, yeah. And it would be different for each spirit. Remember yeah. that? One spirit, would, the table would be very gentle and another would be bam, 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 bam. Yeah. It was different. Wow. That's amazing. That is. That's amazing. Have yeah, you we, done we that, on, um, not to, I, I've been able to levitate, so I don't need to, I have an interesting relationship with spirits. Um, uh, I see them all the time. They're all around me all the time, but I see interdimensional beings as well. 
And um, it's annoying. It's annoying to me because I'm busy doing stuff. And uh, oh. so now I've pushed everybody <laughs> back away from me. I, it's like, if you want my attention, you've got it, but you have to do it the right way or I won't allow it. And so I'm very leery of it. And um, because they'll just yeah. jump all over me and want to move messages back and forth. And I'm like, this is not happening for me anymore. I can't take it. And so I made it stop. And, uh, but every now and then somebody will jump into my view and stare at me, just blaze stare at me. They won't talk to me or anything. They just stare at me for a long time until I finally just say, okay, okay, fine. What, you know? And yeah. uh, usually when that happens, when I come to it, it's because whoever they want to know something somehow magically uh, is coming around me for that reason. One big one was the night Preston OBE didn't to where I was in the middle of the night. Uh, this guy I do medium work for sometimes called me up at 3.30 in the morning. He said, I got to talk to you. Got to talk to you. I'm like, okay, fine. And uh, all of a sudden, this woman got in my face. I mean, in my face. And she said, he has to hear this. He has to hear it. I'm like, oh my God, here we go. It's a telephone call. And I start relaying the message back and forth. And he realized that, oh my God, this is my, uh, um, he had a half sister and her grandmother on the other side was trying to frantically, she had just passed away like the day before. And she wanted her granddaughter to know something. That's his sister, right? Half sister. And then I'm like, do you know who I'm talking about? And he, go, he started crying. He said, yeah. I do. She just passed away. And I said, well, she ain't leaving until you hear this. And I was trying to tell him. And then poof, Preston showed up right in my face. I was like, look. And I was shocked because it took me a second to realize it was him because he had hair. He was very buff. Oh, my God. Beautiful. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like I can't talk to you right now. OK. And uh, but it was unbelievable. She literally had information for that girl who was falling apart and going to pieces. And she sent a message of where she left something for her that nobody knew where it was. And she identified it the next day and found it. And that was like a big one for me. I mean, that was a direct, you. it's here. That doesn't happen that often. And she found it. I know you've done that a couple of times, Christy. Yeah. You've read people. I've watched it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I did it once maybe. But, but the lady yeah. did start crying because I got this image in my head of her walking with her son down wow. the street, arm in arm. She's like, oh, my God, we did that right before he passed. Yeah. So, yeah, I think yeah, spirit will talk to anyone. For people. Yeah. It always made me uncomfortable. I didn't like doing it. I felt <laughs> like I was looking in, in on him while they were naked or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah i can get that you want to know what one really impressed me preston can verify it um when your son passed he came to find me and he said i have to talk to preston tell him to obe to me right now i mean right now he was in my face i was on the phone with preston when he did it that's probably how yeah. he found me and uh, i said preston we gotta hang up you have to go obe to your nephew now he means it now and that's when he went and found him on the spot. And I was like, oh, my God. You know, I I, I was shocked, you know. And he looks like a dentist. <laughs> he looks like you two a little bit, but he's definitely a dentist. And I was shocked, you know, that that happened. I mean, that was just like, whew. Just goes to yeah, show. He came, he came to Wendy, too. He came to Wendy, too. And oh, really? And was going like this. Here, I'm here, I'm here. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, she could read spirit mm -hmm. very easily. Yeah. Yeah. And I did. I went and I saw him and he looked good. And that, that was yeah. a, a difficult loss for all of us, obviously. But boy, when you have that experience, it's it's a huge in your face reminder that there is no such thing as death. Correct. There really isn't. It is a complete vacation to a wondrous land beyond imagination. I mean, it's great. I, mean, I can tell everyone here with full confidence that when we pass on, you will love it. <laughs> it is amazing. <laughs> yes. No rush. I'm not making any recommendations here. <laughs> We're here for a reason. <laughs> oh, definitely. Life is very precious. It's a, and, well, I have a question for you real quick. 
What's the most incredible thing spirit wise that's ever happened to you? I, I had a visit from God. When okay. I was uh, seven, right. six or seven. Wow. God came to me. Um, my grandma taught me how to do the Lord's prayer and I did it. And I was on the second floor of my grandmother's house and the window was open and it came through the window. It was invisible, but it was huge. And it just pushed the energy pushed up against the walls and made everything creak. And uh, mm. it said to me very clearly in a kind of a feminine soothing voice, I will never leave you. I will always be with you. I'll love you all the time. I will never interfere with the decisions that you make in your life. And I will never judge you. Wow. And I know that it's always there with me and I'll feel it. Um, it always comes behind me and uh, I'll, I'll feel it when I need it a lot. And uh, other times it won't come around when I feel like I need it, but it's something that I need to learn in my life. Amazing. Um, but that's yeah, I remember you telling me about that. Yeah. All right, well, we're in the last five minutes of the show. So I just want to remind everyone that you're watching episode two of The Light Gate. I'm your host, Preston Dennett. My co host is Dolly Safran. Our guest today is Christine Kisara Dennett, an amazing artist. We're streaming on several platforms, including 107.7 and 105.3 in New Orleans on the World or the United Paranormal Radio Network, and you know YouTube and Facebook and Roku and other platforms. And yeah, Chris, I just wanted to give you a chance to. I mean, you have a YouTube. Uh, channel and a website if people want to learn more yeah. about that can you talk a little bit about that um my uh, website is kisara.org if you want to check out the et stuff and the paranormal artwork that i've done um unfortunately i haven't kept up with everything so sorry about that <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I get that. And you do have a YouTube yeah. channel, right? Yeah, I have a YouTube channel. Um, I think it's under my name. It's Christine Dennett and at Christine Dennett. So that's how it shows up on my YouTube channel. Uh, I have two of them, actually. But um, yeah, one's private for the family, right? And then the other one is public. Yeah is artwork and stuff but i haven't really worked on it very much so i'm there's still some cool stuff there though yeah <laughs> you have really cool stuff up there you do so i do have yeah, a I would, lot I yeah, have definitely a um recommend checking out uh kisara's website because it is vast it's got an enormous amount of stuff on there and little sections it's a real rabbit hole of awesome awesomeness so you'll spend some really cool time on there and you will see her art all over the internet i yes. called you up sometimes i'm like did you <laughs> allow this guy to use your art and I'm like oh yeah yeah, yeah. and I, I mean i well, see it i started and everything just started you know it just uh there wasn't even photoshop so I'm sure a lot of my artwork's just all right, all over the place. We actually had somebody yeah, put up okay. something on our cartoon channel, Preston's cartoon channel. We saw some of your artwork there, which blew my mind. I was like, oh, wow, look at this. Not kidding. It happened. <laughs> I was like, wow. Uh, <laughs> but that's okay. That gets it out and gets people thinking, you know. Yep. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Well, is there anything else that we didn't talk about that you think is important for people to know? I think it's really <laughs> important for people to to really be open-minded and to embrace every possibility without 
any hint of mental illness because mental illness is a very real thing. But if you can separate the two and see what's real and what is illness, I think you're one step ahead. And it's really good to be honest with yourself and to say, yes, I had this experience. And if other people can't relate to it, that's okay. Right. They still have time, you know. Right. So it's life is to be really experienced and it can be experienced on so many different levels. Yeah. Yeah. So. Those are wise words. Very wise. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> yeah. It's very important to remember those things. We're getting some wonderful comments. People love what you're saying. Yeah, it's Dolly's birthday today. So happy birthday, Dolly. Yeah. <laughs> getting lots of birthday wishes. Oh. Yeah. Happy yeah. birthday. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's freaking me out. <laughs> it really is. I'm like, oh my God. And I'm teetering between, oh my God, I made it. And oh no, I still got more to go. It's like, oh, you know. <laughs> Yeah, it's, okay. it's, it's, the it's the sun going around, you know. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's right. Yeah. Well, the, that weird clicking noise, we still heard it, but it slowed way down towards the last half. So, except for the chirping bird in the background. Yeah. <laughs> That's yours. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is cute. I That's fine. I think the fine. clicking noise was Marco. I think he was the one making everything click. Uh, okay. <laughs> Oh, he's kinetic yeah, sometimes. Yeah, Marco's, <laughs> Marco's a big energy being, just like you, yeah. <laughs> both of you. Well, tell him I'm going to rope him into doing a show one of these days. Yes. <laughs> How about All right, it, well, Marco? <laughs> you want to do a show with him one of these <laughs> Think he's about like, it. sure. Oh, cool. All right. I'm going to come to the camera for a minute and say hi. <laughs> We have to close the show, so he's only got a few seconds. He is. <laughs> I love you all. All right. Well, Thank everyone. You. Big hugs to everybody. <laughs> all right, everyone. That is our show for today. Thank you so much for watching. You've been watching the Like Eight episode two. With me, your host, Preston Dennett, and our co-host Dolly Saffron, and our amazing, wonderful, beautiful, talented, psychic, artistic. Experience your guest. Amazing. <laughs> Christine oh, Kitara Dennett. <laughs> Check out her yeah. website. Check out her YouTube channel, her blog. I think you said you had a blog. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I truly appreciate it. Our guest next week is Michael Schratt. He's a UFO researcher extraordinaire. And we'll have a fun time with him. But yeah, until next time, thanks for watching and keep having fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs>